I created a YouTube video last week called Create a WordPress Website in Under 30 Minutes Without Any Coding Knowledge. And I got some feedback on Twitter from a colleague of mine, Mark Wilkinson. He said, just watch you edit that header template part in the video and wow, it's so complicated. So I asked him in what context was it my demonstration? He replied, the whole wide width, full width and constant nesting of groups and rows. So I thought, okay, that's interesting feedback. Although the video was about no code approach to building a website with WordPress, I get what he meant about the complexities of nested blocks and layouts, particularly my video with the header. So I thought I'd address this in this next video. Some of the feedback he gave was, there are three groups in that header file. Seems overkill for a simple layout. Granted, yes, I would agree. With my design head on, I would always opt for a simple layout. But sometimes you're going to get a situation where your client wants more complex layouts. It doesn't have to be the header. It can be in a page layout or it can be in the footer. But inevitably, you're going to come across this problem. Other questions he asked was, I guess you need three groups, but I'm not sure why. Additionally, why can't you set the alignment on the outer group block? So I thought I'd address all of those in this next video. So let's dive in. Hi, Elliot Richmond, uh, WordPress theme and plugin developer. So I just wanted to follow up on that last video I did um, from the feedback that I got from Mark Wilkson, which is um, always useful uh, to know, but I, th I think I need to sort of elaborate on it. So yeah, so just to give context, what I'm gonna do is to explain like the traditional way that we kind of develop websites. So this represents kind of a browser. Now, generally what we do is if we put in a div on in HTML and they just load it in our browser, this div will take up the, well, it will take up um, the full width depending on what we elements we put inside that div. It would actually create um, an auto sized div like that unless you um, did something fancy with CSS and you know, change the display to block and block means it would take up the full width and you can give it a color background and things like that. Um, but with, uh, as developers, we would um, generally create, or sometimes we would create a, what's known as a container. Um, and that would, we would set a width, width on that, set margin zero top and bottom, and then the width horizontal set um, margins to auto. And what that would do is it would center our container div. Now, that's okay, I mean, that works, but um, sometimes when you want a header, in, especially with navigation, you want a, a full width and color background. And what that means is you then need to create an, another div nested inside it, um, and then set your container um, widths and margins, etc., to to get it centered on the page. Now, inevitably, um, you're gonna maybe want to put in a logo and maybe a site title. I just grab that. Um, and that means we're gonna have to put in an, another kind of containing div. So if we put an outer containing div there, we can then put in a, maybe a site title and then we've got a tagline under here, or that could be a telephone number. And then, you know, naturally we'd have a navigation and then maybe if the client might say, well, I want some, I don't know, like a ticker or something, I wouldn't recommend that, but I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible, but they may want a ticker underneath there. Again, this would basically mean you'd have to put in a containing div. So your containing div would then have your navigation, and then you may have, I don't know, like another banner, it might be an announcement banner or something like that. So you can see that all of these, uh, just to achieve what we want to achieve, it gets fairly complex, but in the spirit of the last video, we're not approaching this with code, we're doing a no-code approach, so um, we can forget all that. And I'm gonna pop back to my original site editing, and I'm just gonna explain, just elaborate on some of the questions that Mark asked um, in the tweet. Um, and it was basically about, you know, the nested blocks in, in the header. Can it be simpler? Yes. Uh, but considering real world, real world complexities, um, you're going to get scenarios where they need to be more complex. So just to illustrate 
how we do this with the no code approach um, in the in the illustration I did earlier or before. Um, let's see how we can build that. So I'm just going to turn off my sidebar here. So this is how I kind of originally started with my header that, that spans the full width, and that that's that's fine. Um, now, one one really important thing to know when you're doing the full site experience or full site editing um, is this list view is just you know it it's going to level up the way you can do layouts and stuff. So we can see that we've got um, a group, what I'd call a containing block. Now, containing blocks basically mean that you can nest other blocks within those blocks. So a containing block is, is a block called, uh, for me, it's a group block. There's a, a row, there's a stack, there's the cover block, I believe. You can nest things inside that as well. Um, and yeah, so why do we have all of these nested blocks? Well, we do this because to achieve that, that layout. So let me just... Uh, Oh, I need my sidebar. So, because this is a nested uh, block and we've got something inside it, we need to tell Gilbert that this is um, that inner blocks use the content width. Now, if we look at our, uh, we'll say this is the parent block. We look at the immediate child block, which is a row. We can see that we've got um, we've got justification and we've got vertical alignment. Now, what we want really is the uh, the horizontal alignment. And the only way we can achieve that is by going to a parent block and enabling the inner blocks use content width. So by doing that, we then have control over the content width and also the wide width of the uh, the immediate nested block. So we can see that something's happened here already. So if we go to our row, we can see now that we've got an icon which is the alignment for that nested block. If we click on that, we can see that we've already got some settings uh, for the maximum width, which is an, between you and me, it's it's the content width, and we have the wide width, which is a thousand. It's like, well, we didn't set anything here, right? So, where are they coming from? Well, they're coming from what's known as the global styles. So, if we look in our global styles, just to uh, explain that these this is the settings icon, and that's pertains to the actual block that you're you're um, editing or setting. Global styles comes from the whole global website, like the default settings, if you like. So if we go to the layout, we can see that we've got a content width of 620 and 1000 wide width. And that is where those settings come for the, the settings on this um, block here. So if we look at our alignment again, that's where the 620 is coming from, and that's where the seven, uh, the 1,000 pixels is coming from. So if we set that to wide, now we can't see it goes to the extremity of my, the width of my group at the moment because I've got my sidebar open. I don't have the screen to show you that. So now we can see that we've got um, that is aligning to 1,000 widths. This is a little bit confusing because you get this kind of like blue border and then um, this icon that's kind of looks like it's selected. It's the one that's selected that is um, applied to this block. Um, the blue border is to do with focus, which is to do with accessibility. So um, that's what that is, but it can be a little bit confusing. Similarly, if you if it's already set to say wide width like this, if you select it again, it goes to default or none, which is a bit weird, but anyway, <laughs> whatever. So um, let's put that back to wide width and that's our uh, coming from our global settings. So you can override that by clicking on your uh, your parent block and you can go to your settings and say we want to set that to the content width we want to be say 900 and sorry 800. Now by default when you set the content it also uh, replicates that in the wide width but you can then further edit the wide width so we want to make that a thousand and then we just move, we will close the sidebar. Now that's now set to a thousand, which is my wide width. But if we come to our alignment um, of the, the nested uh, block, we can see that it's now overridden with our, our actual block settings that we set. 
uh, 800 being the content width and 1000 being the Y width. Okay, so hopefully that explains um, the, the complexities and weirdness of that. So why would we have all of these nested blocks? Well, a group block, by default, group blocks um, stack elements uh, unless you otherwise um, set inner blocks to do other things. <clears throat> so this is the reason why the, the inner block for the group is a, is a row. Now, a, there are two different kind of style of this type of block. You've got um, a row and you've also got a stack. <clears throat> and it kind of uses flex, Flexbox to achieve what it needs to achieve. So if we look at our group, I want every all of the elements in, in the whole group to be uh, a row. I want everything to align horizontally. And again, similarly, I've got this other block here, which is kind of like it has the logo and then it has a title and then it's a um, tag, tagline. So again, I need that to be a, a row so that I can horizontally align things. And then where I've got my title and tag, I need that to be a group. So by default, a group will stack elements. It will run the flow of the, the stack unless I define it as a, as a group, as a row, sorry. So yeah, <clears throat> granted, I don't have to have that as a group. I can say I want that actually to be a stack. Nothing will change. The only thing that changes is we get different types of um, justification. So if this is a group block, we lose the justification. Well, actually, no, we do get justification there. But you'll notice that it doesn't change because um, just the nature of, of the group uh, doesn't allow for that. So. If we change this to a, a stack, for instance, we then have control over our justification of, um, and that kind of use, in the in the background it uses flexbox, but I won't go into that too into too much detail. So we've got this um, uh, another justification which is like stretch elements, and that basically spaces everything out. It's more applicable to rows than it is stacks. So if we change this back to a group, and I'll explain the. The, um, <clears throat> the stretch. So if we have our, so from our block, a group block, a row block, and this is represents everything within the group, um, we can see that we've got it set to stretch. Now we can have that just or yeah justified, and that will just centralize everything. Or we can range everything left, or range everything right. So by using the stretch between, it basically just spreads everything out evenly, which is quite nice. Um, to do that with code uh, CSS is, is quite complex, especially when you've got nested um, flexbox elements. Um, but this is the no-code approach, right? So um, what else can I explain? So, so this is a group block. Um, you, like I said, you may have the title, you may have a tagline, and you may client might want you know a telephone number in there. So you can play around with all of the, the alignments and padding of these to sort of make them fit nicer, basically. Uh, so let's just get rid of that. That's going to go out of the, the context of this kind of explanation, really. So uh, I've explained blocks, container blocks, settings, global, content widths, um, alignments. Yeah, so I think that covers everything. Uh, Yeah, if there's any questions or feedback, uh, feel free to yeah make some comments or like this video, share, um, always helps. And uh, I hope that's kind of addressed uh, or taken a deeper dive into um, why I did what I did. Again, you know, argue, you can make this a lot simpler, of course. Um, but, you know, let's take it to an extreme, right? <laughs> okay, so thanks for watching. Like I said, like, share, subscribe, whatever. That'd be great. Cheers.